Imagine you are watching games on YouTube and you discover the latest Assassin's Creed Odyssey trailer on Ubisoft's official channel on YouTube. You will notice the Play Now button. By simply clicking on that button, the player is brought directly into the game in a browser in as quick as five seconds. With Stadia, this waiting game will be a thing of the past. With tons of new features, a new improved controller, and pretty much a pretty interesting vision, Google is definitely looking to change the landscape of everything surrounding this uh, actual service. Now let's, uh, instead of, you know, as a matter of fact, instead of me actually boring you and breaking down these features, let's just show off the actual hardware and all that jazz, right? Let's actually just uh, play a few clips. Now, first clip I'm gonna play, let's talk about the latency, the main thing that we knew for a fact they have to face. Latency was a main thing going into this event that pretty much Google had to nail at Microsoft's inside Xbox there is this ongoing debate whether the gameplay we saw running on the actual tablet phone that was being showcased on the event was real or fake many people believe that it was real and then they, they just suffered from latency problems other people believe that it wasn't real and that it was fake and that you know um, the presenter was just acting like she was playing the game when the reality was she wasn't even though she came out on Twitter and said that she was indeed playing the game and I guess wasn't focused so to speak on actually uh, showing it off so let's take a look at this uh, latency and how easy you can play this service on even outdated laptops which they actually showed at the um, actual event so let's go ahead and roll with you there is basically no hardware acceleration on that laptop whatsoever and the game is running directly from our data center it's then easy and instantaneous to move that same game experience from exactly that moment onto the phone here on a Pixel 3 XL. And we can go straight onto the desktop PC. We actually went to buy the least powerful PC we could find here. And then it's once again seamless to go from running on our uh, PC to running on a tablet. And then finally, we then move seamlessly to the TV. And so this TV is accessed using this, which is a Chromecast Ultra HDMI streamer. We're also enabling players to use your existing USB controller or mouse and keyboard when playing Stadia on a laptop or PC. So you saw with that particular clip right there that it was pretty impressive. Everything went from point A to point B at the snap of a finger, no hiccups, no nothing. It was actually pretty good. That's a, that's a definite improvement over what we saw at the Inside Xbox event. Now, Microsoft does actually have a little small advantage when it comes to the Project X Cloud that I forgot all about and I forgot to bring up when we were live actually uh, reviewing this. But we're definitely gonna save that to the end of this, okay? So let's uh, take a look at the controller. Now, the controller that we saw back before this event was leaked and it looked very similar to this. As of right now, the controller looks three times better than that and those screenshots. And this is the controller that we, that we have now when it comes to the service. The controller that they showed off is actually pretty interesting and it has quite a few uh, built-in features and is looking pretty damn interesting, I'm not gonna lie. There is one important question though that I did kind of have for this controller and that's whether or not did it use a you know rechargeable battery or does it actually use, or actually use double A batteries? So I guess we'll find out that out you know um, when we get close to the launch but let's go ahead and look at that as well I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of the Google hardware family the Stadia controller it enables you to access the full Stadia experience and there are many advantages to the Stadia controller and the first is that it will connect through Wi-Fi directly to the game that is running in the Google data center the Stadia controller identifies which screen or device you want to play on and links it with your game session running in the cloud, ensuring the highest possible performance and the best experience for players. The Stadia controller features two very important new buttons. The capture button is for sharing and saving your game experience back out to YouTube. 
The gamer can choose to share their experiences starting with a click of this button. And the second one is the Google Assistant button. Pressing this button allows players to immediately access the controller's built-in microphone so they can get help from the assistant for special in-game features integrated by developers. Now, you can't have a streaming service, you can't have any of these things work unless you have a proper infrastructure. Google has really gone all out when it comes to their infrastructure in terms of providing you a seamless transition between the gameplay and the actual stream in question. So without further ado, let's take a look into the actual um, infrastructure. And this is where we're gonna get into where Google threw shade at Sony and Microsoft in uh, uh, indeed. So this is all gonna be them, all right? So let's go ahead and roll that as well. NVIDIA's architecture on top of the Google Data Center network. The network consists of fiber optic links and subsea cables between hundreds of points of presence and more than 7,500 edge node locations around the globe. More edge nodes mean the compute resources are closer to players, which results in better performance. When Stadia launches, we will have increased performance significantly to support resolutions up to 4K at 60 frames per second with HDR and surround sound. And in the future, we'll be able to stream games in up to 8K resolution. In addition to the stream you get as a player, there is a second simultaneous stream at 4K 60 frames per second that you can choose to share directly to YouTube from the Stadia data center. Meaning your gaming memories will be saved at the highest possible quality. As a developer, you're used to being forced to tone down your creative ambitions that are limited by the hardware. But our vision with Stadia is that the processing resources available will scale up to, ma to match your imagination. In this new generation, the data center is your platform. We've partnered with our friends at AMD to build a custom GPU. And here's how the graphical power of Stadia compares to the top two consoles in the market. 10.7 teraflops is more powerful than the top two consoles of the previous generation combined. Stadia will be using the Linux operating system and the open graphics API Vulkan. And when it comes to game engines, we are excited to announce that we have partnered with Unreal, who will be fully supporting the Stadia platform. We are also partnering with Unity to bring full support for the two most popular and familiar game engines to our development community and we're empowering developers with an amazing array of familiar middleware that you already use to power your game development, including the most popular physics engine. So as you clearly can see there, my um, Google pretty much is not playing, <laughs> they're not playing around, okay? They're not playing around at all. Um, what I found interesting, again, this is where they took shade at Sony and Microsoft. You guys saw it on the screen. They're claiming that their service runs at 10.7 um, teraflops. Now, the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One X, uh, the PS4 Pro runs at 4.2 uh, teraflops, and the Xbox One X runs at 6 teraflops. Now, when you look at both of those together, again, they have the advantage over both right now, but this is where I kind of believe they kind of, uh, they, little, they literally kind of just gave Sony and Microsoft a little uh, leeway here into what they need to do in terms of outperforming this actual service. Now, now, there are numerous leaks and rumors going around that the PlayStation 5 and, of course, the new Xbox are going to be over 10 teraflops. So if that's the case and they're going to be in the double digits, then I'm starting to believe a lot of these leaks that are going around that the PlayStation 5 could very well be 12 teraflops. Now, that right there is what is where I kind of believe it will be 12 teraflops. I don't necessarily believe the ones going around that are going to be 14 teraflops, not even for Xbox, you know, for the new Xbox, unless Microsoft really wants to take a gamble and release that particular thing, sure. But again, that's going to come down to both of them in terms of who really wants the power narrative the most. Odds are Microsoft might go for it because they're going to have a cheaper option as well as have a, so to speak, a more premium option. So if that's the case, then Microsoft might actually end up having the more powerful console. But again, it all comes down to the games after this power narrative is over, which has always been the case going down the road. 
um another thing that's pretty interesting too about this they go into multiplayer and when they went into multiplayer you know they started talking about the multiplayer portion of the game they actually showed off a game running on this uh, service now this game running on the service looks very interesting because what i thought was immediately i got crackdown 3 vibes and i was thinking are you guys really taking jabs to microsoft with crackdown 3 because they showed off destructibility with the actual uh, service and they were showing off just a few other cool stuff that they can do so you know whatever google has got planned and whatever they're going to do google is most certainly not they're not goofing off when it comes to this service man they're just not goofing off i can appreciate what they're doing and i can definitely see that google is not you know playing any games for sure i can definitely see um they were not really upfront with us though when it came to the price of this actual uh service so i'm guessing they're still negotiating that with their partners and whatever to get it you know to a price where a you will pay for and and a price where I guess it would uh, benefit all of them. So whatever is going to happen is going to happen. But you guys saw for yourself that Google's presentation was actually pretty telling. It was actually not a bad presentation whatsoever. So going into this, Phil Spencer replied to this event. Now, Phil Spencer is basically saying that, you know, expect a lot of cool stuff at E3. Expect us to go hard on E3. Now, Phil Spencer, I know, again, I know people in my comments that you're going to say, well, Ryan, Phil always says this. I get it. I know. But when you think about this, they kind of have to. And I kind of am going to give them a little uh, bit of slack here. They kind of need to show their best at E3 this year. And the reason why? Well, you think about it. Remember, they showed off their streaming service, you know, Google, and also Microsoft. Microsoft showed off Project X Cloud first, and the internet has not recovered in a positive light when it comes to Microsoft. Many people are claiming that it's fake, right? And many people are saying that it's not real, where Google, on the other hand, just showed off that theirs is real and is running natively on the device. So Microsoft has to show their hand and really go all out. And since EA is not there and Sony's not there, then we should see nothing but huge floor spaces for Microsoft. And a lot of, you know, spotlight should most certainly be highlighting all the positives and negatives of xCloud. And to not get a little too ahead of myself, let's go ahead and bring up the positive that Google has, or I'm sorry, not Google, but Microsoft has over Google Stadia. That's right, yes, Microsoft is actually in a little bit of a better position, um, higher than, um, you know, my um, Google when it comes to this uh, service. Now, the way Microsoft went about xCloud, they're basically using local Xbox hardware and a, a server rack on a data center. And basically the trick behind this and the reason why behind this decision is so that they can run all tr their games. Basically, like the way you would see a game run on a console, it would work basically the same on the actual servers. And this is the trick they're doing in terms of making it more compatible and easier to develop for when it comes to developers kind of like making a port or really making it for the exact same thing without the hassle of having to develop extra amount of uh, you know techniques etc to get it on there so that's what the way or that's the way um, uh, Microsoft is going about their um, servers okay now another thing you got to take into account too um, with this now there I'm guessing there are drawbacks to either way you go about it now with Microsoft using local Xbox hardware and, you know, going the easier route in terms of like, you know, having games be um, working na uh, natively on the actual uh, service. You notice how there was latency issues. Now that's running legit on the Xbox that we saw on xCloud, or I'm sorry, not xCloud, but um, inside Xbox. If that was running legit on the device, then you gotta ask yourself that question, then what are the drawbacks behind it? So is latency really that bad if that was legit running on the device and Microsoft quote unquote didn't fake it? So you saw that. Now there was a little bit of latency problems in Google's event too. Yes, I did see it. I had to rewatch it and I did notice that there was a little latency um, issue with Google's when they were showing off theirs. Um, it was uh, during one of the clips when he actually transitioned from the, I think it was from the laptop to the tablet. There was a little um, lag there. So there was a little bit of um, a delay there. So yeah, it was, it was definitely there. But again, this is a service or I'm sorry, this service and the way uh, they're trying to go about it, right? 
it's going to take time to develop for this is going to take time google's looking at it from a far broader spectrum in terms of delivering you 8k and such and such that's what google's really trying to go for google's really trying to go for that quality experience down the road whereas microsoft is also trying to give you a quality experience but they're also trying to push it um more earlier than it needs to, or i'm sorry well yeah i'll say more soon than it's uh, ready for that's the way i'm i'm looking at, um, at it right now so all this stuff is going to take a long time for us to really get there but that's what we got going on there all right so that's pretty much uh my thoughts on the whole situation i know i had to incorporate everything and, and break this down so i want to say uh thank you guys so much if you guys uh survived this long in the video definitely hit that like button if you enjoy it i do appreciate it to all the newer faces welcome to the channel and um yeah that's just uh my take on it in terms of the actual conference and actual review of it Again, I give it a B plus. I actually thought they did a pretty good job in terms of, uh, you know, um, breaking down what they're working on and what they got going on for the future. And that's pretty much all I could really ask for for Google in this particular case. I do appreciate the effort. So definitely, um, it was definitely an interesting show for sure. But now the spotlight is on Microsoft. And with the spotlight being on Microsoft, they definitely got all the time in the world to, you know, show off whatever they can and see exactly how they actually match up with uh, Google. But as of right now, it looks like Google is most certainly taking the, uh, the title when it comes to having a superior online service or not online, but streaming service. So um, there you guys go. All right. So um, I will see you guys next time. This is Big Cloud signing out. Thank <laughs> you.